Ron Paul versus the New World Order Observations and Omens by Jonathan Barlow Gee, Tallahassee, Florida, USA, June seventh through eleventh, twenty twelve. Who is Ron Paul? Having met Ron Paul in person, and so far as I was in a line to shake his hand at a book signing he attended here in my hometown, I can speak on his character from my own personal experience. To me, he reminded me of myself in a better life, in so far as, in some ways, we were the same, and those ways more pronounced in him were things I would like to have been able to better develop in myself. He is, to my assessment, shy, but he has obviously for his whole life forced himself to be outgoing. This much we share in common as a personal trait, however, which I have always failed in, and which, in his case, Ron Paul has succeeded by conquering his shyness and being able to speak well in public and to relate to any individual on a personal level. He has compassion, he has resolve and inner strength, and he has conviction that his direction is the correct one for him to be headed on. As I approached him in line to pass his book to him for his signature, I grew in admiration for him more and more, and when I got to shake his hand I smiled and thanked him in a way I hoped would encompass my full amount of respect and the sincere depth of my gratitude for his playing the part of a positive role model in my own life. Ron Paul is a 12-term Republican congressman from Clute, Texas, in the United States House of Representatives. He has written numerous books on the subjects of libertarian philosophies, the Austrian School of Economics, and the U.S. Constitution from the point of view of a public servant who is sworn to uphold it as his oath of office. He married Carol, his high school sweetheart, and enlisted in the U.S. Air Force at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis as a medical flight doctor. After leaving the service, he worked as an obstetrician-gynecologist and eventually built up his own medical practice and has delivered over 4,000 babies during his medical career. He entered politics in the mid-1970s, citing his reason for doing so as growing concerns for the path the nation was on following President Nixon's removal of the U.S. dollar from the gold standard. In the 1980s, he was appointed by President Ronald Reagan to serve on the Gold Commission, tasked to investigate retooling the Federal Reserve to mint gold coin currency. In 1988, he ran against Republican nominee George Herbert Walker Bush and Democrat Michael Dukakis as a third-party libertarian candidate for the U.S. presidency. He ran again for the U.S. presidency in 2008, this time narrowly missing, garnering the nomination for the Republican Party. He is currently running for the Republican nomination to be decided this August, prior to the 2012 presidential race between the Republican nominee and Democrat incumbent Barack Hussein Obama in November of this year. Ron Paul has spent the better part of his adult life championing the cause of liberty, that is, as he defines it, the right of every individual given to us by our Creator. He further defines this cause by framing the intent of the U.S. Constitutional Founders as being to ensure our rights to personal liberty and a sound economy. Personal liberty, he goes further to say, includes the right to our person, our privacy, what we eat and drink and put into our bodies, and should also include the right to keep the fruits of our labor. A sound economy, Ron Paul further goes on to say, is given in Section 10.1, the Contracts Clause of the U.S. Constitution, as being only gold and silver. Ron Paul is a rather unique figure in all of human history. He has managed to gain a massive amount of populist support from the American voting public, as well as from many hundreds of thousands of international fans online, in a relatively short period of time, while denying to use his salary as a congressman to campaign with, 
as well as not appealing to the support of all big-name lobbying firms to campaign for him. The brush fires of freedom message has spread rapidly online, and during the 2008 campaign cycle, it was statistically certain that had everyone who supported Dr. Paul's candidacy for U.S. president been able to vote for him, he would have won. However, at that time, most of the fan base for his personality cult was larger internationally than it was accepted in the mainstream media. The subsequent formation of the Tea Party movement, a diverse group of nonpartisan, disgruntled voters, was largely created when Ron Paul did not win the U.S. presidency in 2008. Other groups, such as Campaign for Liberty online, Youth for Liberty on university campuses, and the current phone bankers and money bomb contributors for the Restore America Now campaign platform in Ron's present presidential election race, have shown strong dedication to supporting Ron Paul as their sole choice for a Republican-nominated candidate. The primary enemies of Ron Paul's dedicated campaign staff and his very loyal supporters worldwide have been the small and shrinking cabal of the New World Order-owned mainstream media. The MSM has a strong aversion to the incumbent Obama-opposed Tea Party as radical right-wing extremists, and has devoted less time to covering Paul than any other candidate, and devoted their full amount of time covering him to attempts at slandering his personality. In historical hindsight, this will appear, as it does to many of us alive now, to be a pathetic and desperate last-ditch attempt by the MSM to maintain their fading relevancy in the online direct media era of the 21st century Internet. What His Supporters Believe Ron Paul's supporters, sometimes called Paulites in the MSM, are more attached to the election of Ron Paul than any constituency has been to any political candidate in the last 75 years. Even the I Like Ike campaign cannot be considered comparable to the Ron Paul phenomenon. Although that sort of vapid populist sloganeering was matched in 2008 by the Obamanoids, the neoliberal and Zionist Democrat voters who elected Obama, the platform Ron Paul stands on, and which is fully supported by his constituency, be they called the Tea Party or Paleoconservatives, Libertarians or Austrians, etc., is stated simply, not just to win an election, but to change the whole course of history. Although he might not like to see himself as a leader of a social movement, which he defends as being comprised of individuals, many of whom don't agree with one another. The dedicated Paulites who have followed him and found him flawless since the lead-up to the 2008 election cycle know that he is a once-in-a-lifetime candidate. The Paulite faction are loyal to the death to Ron Paul, and most of them are prepared to commit to a populist revolutionary civil war inside the United States to oust the existing federal government if Ron Paul cannot accomplish their coup for them bloodlessly using the existing system of democracy. His supporters are not crazy, nor radicals, nor extremists. They are real people who believe in the value of the U.S. Constitution and who know that there is a cabal of bankers already running the federal government and the MSM that do not have the best interests of real people, like themselves, at all in their minds or hearts. Ron Paul's supporters are not stupid, as the MSN would love the U.S. voters to believe. They know what the MSM knows also, but will not admit, that Ron Paul is not only electable, having run and won 12 times for Congress, in general, but that in all polls against incumbent Democrat President Barack Obama, Ron Paul wins by a wide margin. Ron Paul is the popular choice, and unless he renounces everything he stands for and stumps for any of his status quo opponents, 
He has already clinched both the Republican Party nomination for candidate, as well as the general election for 45th President of the United States of America. However, knowing how much popular support there is for this man, the New World Order machine has sought to railroad his campaign beside massive, premature, and non-journalistic headlines announcing the Republican candidate nomination of Mormon former governor of Massachusetts, Mitt Romney, months prior to the Republican primary election, held at the Republican National Convention, when the nominee is actually picked by all the assembled delegates. Ron Paul supporters, the so-called Paulites, have already occupied more than enough of the unbound delegate positions to landslide Romney, as well as the rest of the other still technically on the ballot, though no longer campaigning, status quo candidates right out of relevancy into the margins of the dustbin of history. The 2012 RNC will be, so long as Ron Paul is still alive and has not been replaced by a bizarro Ron Paul clone who looks like him but says and believes the opposite, a major historical event for freedom-loving patriots everywhere around the world. Unfortunately, if Ron Paul is not nominated in the Republican primaries as the GOP candidate for 45th U.S. President, there will be a lot of very pissed off real people who will be ready, willing, and able to execute a successful coup d'etat in Ron Paul's name against the federal government of the USA. The problem with this line of logic is that it means we will not have Ron Paul himself involved for as long a period of time. If he is democratically elected president of the USA, and assuming that election is honored by the New World Order appointed incumbent administration, Ron Paul will likely live to a ripe old age many years after retiring from fixing the national economy and repealing most of the Federal Register of Laws. If he loses the election, or worse, is assassinated, the mob he leads will be left leaderless, and the result will prove the New World Orderers, who believe humanity's natural state is violent anarchy, justified in enforcing their wet dream of global martial law. What his detractors believe. As already mentioned, his detractors, mainly within the mainstream media, MSM, call Ron Paul a lot of names and accuse him of a lot of basically false assertions. The most publicized criticism of him in the MSM is over racist newsletters which were circulated under his name during his Libertarian Party run for the presidency in 1988 against George Herbert Walker Bush. The use of dirty tricks by the Bush campaign is a matter of no small amount of historical record, and although Ron Paul did not write these racist newsletters himself and has disavowed all contact from their author, the MSM continues to blame him personally and accuse him of being racist, which is patently slanderous libel because it is untrue. However, there are a few other allegations raised against Ron Paul by his detractors, although they are no less untrue, nor any more maturely and logically formulated arguments. For example, the MSM loves to assail Ron Paul as unelectable, this is, of course, nonsense, because he is a 12-term elected congressman. They compare him to Ross Perot, the third-party reform candidate in the 1992 electoral cycle who ran against incumbent George H.W. Bush and Democrat Bill Clinton, and call him in no uncertain terms a leprechaun, and the Tea Party movement he and his son Rand Paul helped form the MSM has followed suit from other neoconservatives in the federal government itself, calling them political hobbits. The only, to my current knowledge, serious investigative research journalist from outside the MSM to attack Paul's integrity, Webster Tarplay, accuses Paul of nepotism, citing that some 60 members of his family are on his congressional payroll. Not only is that not a crime, but it is common practice among the existing cabal of the wealthy 
elites in the federal government to hire their immediate family.